So I'll go ahead and make a statement that goes Mr. Prater may wish to. So uh one second, so let's uh let's uh real quick. Thank you all much. So uh, appreciate y'all being here. My name is Kevin Calvi. Uh, I am a candidate for district attorney. Uh, recently, I was contacted by a member of the media saying that he had confirmed that the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, OSBI, was quote unquote investigating my website and wanting to know if the OSBI contacted me. They have not. Um, think about that for a moment, what that means. There are two things wrong with this picture. First of all, OSBI only investigates when they have a demand to investigate from law enforcement. I was prepared to come here today and demonstrate why it was clear by process of elimination that it had to be the district attorney's office under Mr. Prater and his employee Mr. Giger, who's my opponent in this race, that called for this investigation. But I gather from News 9 that you all have confirmed from the OSPI that it was Mr. Prater's office that demanded the investigation. Think about that for a second. <clears throat> We've got um, a race between somebody working for Mr. Prater and myself. And then on the eve of the election, we have Mr. Prater uh, demanding an investigation of me. That is an abuse of power. And it's not the first time he's done it. He's done it to judges, he's done it to legislators, he's done it to lawyers. Why don't you specifically he's done it to cases, Kevin? many individual citizens. Give him give in which specific he cases. Would say that. So Mr. Prater is a bully. He is abusing his power as a DA to investigate something. By the way, something really easy to explain, which I'll be in a moment. But he is abusing his power on the eve of the election. This is no different than what the Biden administration is trying to do to some of their political opponents, abusing, weaponizing parts of the FBI. Not all the FBI, but parts of it to go after Biden's political opponents. It's the very same thing. Prosecutors have immense power in our country, and it is very important we have prosecutors who use that power ethically. Mr. Prater and Mr. Gigger do not use it ethically. And they abuse their power to go after political opponents. That's why I'm running for this office, because we need to bring the focus of this office back on public safety, not on political debates, like Mr. Prater does. Second thing wrong with this picture is, why do they have to hear about it from somebody in the media? Who leaked it to the media? I'll tell you who, it was David Prater. So again, an abuse of power. If you request an investigation, if you were honest about it, what you would do is just wait for that investigation to come to fruition and then see what it said and then move on from that. And it said it was leaked. And that also has happened before to many other people. That they will leak an investigation because some people think if you're being investigated there must be something wrong and it casts a doubt on somebody. That's often not the case, right? Investigation, you know, done properly you know, is, uh, you know, is fine. Um, in this case, the OSBI hadn't even called um, because, I'll explain in a moment, it's a nothing burger deal. But Mr. Prater is trying to just get big dirt out of me out in the media right before an election by leaking that to the media. And that also is an abuse of power. So um, what I was asked is if 99% um, of my website work for the campaign has been done by my general consultant, Ascent, whom I've paid repeatedly over the time. A tiny amount of work on it was done by a friend of mine, who has a company called Veritas, and he simply hadn't invoiced me for that. He finally did, at my request yesterday, uh, sent the invoice. He said he didn't think about it because he did very, very little work, almost not. Ended up being $500, which he paid. So it is a nothing burger deal, but yet I was tried to be hot box. Somebody trying to say, oh, you're being investigated for something that's piddly like that because the DA is abusing his power to try to get his own employee elected. That is wrong. Aren't Americans and Oklahomans of all political stripes really tired of this kind of abuse of power? I think so. Again, that's why I'm running for district attorney. That's why I've got bipartisan support going into the selection. Um, by the way, they're desperate. I'm way ahead in the polls. I got almost 50% outright in the primary more than twice as much as Mr. Giga that works for David Prater. And uh, we're gonna win this election Tuesday, despite the bullying efforts that 
Mr. Prater's turn. And so we're happy to you know, move forward and answer those questions. But I wanted the people to know that their elected district attorney, David Prater, has abused his power. And this is one of just many instances where that's the case. Um, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of other people who would be willing to talk about instances where that happened uh, at some other time. But right now, I want to make sure that people knew that. And so I appreciate you. Commissioner Cowley, what is, who runs Veritas and what work was done? Um, so uh, it is run by a person named Brett Farley. And uh, it's kind of a sideline business for him. And uh, Brett also does work for me at the county, which is not political. He's paid separately for that. Um, and uh, I don't have a public information officer uh, employed by me at the county. So I have kind of a part-time thing that's under contract. That's what he does with that. <clears throat> and in this one, um, he, I think it took an old website and, and, and uh, made a few changes and put it up there. Again, there's about 1% of the work that's done on the website, uh, very little. And he said, when I asked him, he hadn't invoiced me because it just wasn't, uh, he, he would do it at the end of the campaign because it wasn't that, uh, that much money. And I'm confused, I'm sorry, is Mr. Farley the registered lobbyist at the state capitol for, am I thinking of the right person? The same person, yes. With the, what's the name of his He group? works for the uh, Roman Catholic Archdiocese. Okay. So did, and you, when you were a lobbyist at the capitol a couple years ago, did you work with him on stuff or how did you guys well, meet? I, how, how well, did I've you... known him for years. Okay. Was it the, your Facebook page and your, and your website online or just your Facebook page that he did for you? Um, I, I'd have to go back and even ask him. I mean, it was a while back and it was a tiny amount of work. But he you, does not do the regular posting on any of my Facebook But pages. you paid him now? Yeah. Wrote him a check for $500? Yep. When did you do that? Uh, just today. Did you heard from he had, the, uh, he had an invoice me. Have you heard from the OSBI yet? Nope. You know they're interested in that flyer you sent out about the survey a couple of years ago where you had your children on there too? Nope. Never heard of it. Okay. You know, so, uh, you know, it's, it's odd when you have to hear about investigations to the media. Um, that's ordinarily not the way you would think about it. Would work. So, all right, thank you very much. Mr. Calvi, are yes. you willing to answer the questions that DA Prater asked? What what abuse of power are you alleging against him other than the, the ones you've stated that called this today? Um, let me get you a list, okay? I'll be happy to do that. When I can sit down and write them out and things like that, happy to do that. Do you have any evidence that he leaked this information to the media? Uh, he's the only one who could have known about it. Uh, there are only five entities that could have requested the investigation. I already uh, know that it was not any of the other ones that did that. Nobody else you know, from the, uh, had the approach to request. And so, yes. And since learning of the OSBI investigation, have you called the OSBI to come forward and, and talk about things? No, I don't know who it is that's supposed to be doing it. I figured. If they think it's important, they're giving a call, and I'm happy to answer the question. I've answered it already, and I'm happy to so you have to the deal. So that does not worry me at all. So you're prepared to be transparent with the LSBI? Absolutely. I, I'm transparent right now in front of the, you know, everybody. So yes, absolutely. That's not a problem. Have you feared this for a while? I think I remember this legislative session, maybe it was last, but I think it was this one, you were in support of, you sort of actually presented the bill in the House committee that would have changed the rules in terms of whether a DA can represent county commissioners. Do you remember that? Sean, it was a Sean Roberts bill, but you kind of yeah, talked about it. Yeah, we've from the DA's office for a long time. Uh, by state law, the DA's office has to be the lawyer for the county unless they agree otherwise. I mean, imagine if you uh, in, in legal matters had to do that, you can see why that could end up being a problem. So I did uh, uh, ask a legislator to present that bill a couple of years ago. And are you at all concerned this close to runoff election that this will hurt your chances? Well, I think that's the intent for them. So that's why I wanted to come out and say why the real story here is the abuse of power by the DA's office in trying to investigate a political opponent right before the election. That's the story. Okay, while we've got you, I was curious, I know you've talked to Nolan a little bit about it, but the $10,000 contract that you had or payment that you had from the Epic Charter, uh, Epic Youth Services folks, that, was that for legal work? And, and I know you can't talk about like the real specifics of that, but generally what topic? Was it about, was it criminal defense? Was it? No, it had nothing to do with any of the, the issues for which they've been in the media. It was after I was a legislator and long before I thought I'd run for DA. So I happen to have six children who are students at Epic Charter School. You know, uh, that's, that's really my nexus with Epic Charter School. So like contract work kind or? Thing, yes. 
Epic California or? No. Okay. Thought I'd ask while I had you. Okay. Yeah. You said you're way ahead in the polls. What What do you mean by that? What? I'm going to win on Tuesday. What polls have you done recently? Right, we've done some polls. I'm going to win with votes to spare on Tuesday. Have you been contacted for any other investigation? I know that Mr. Prater had asked that the jail trust you know, uh, nope. be looked at as nope. part of I'm that. Not under investigation for that either. Well, I, I, not Please you, but has the has the jail trust been contacted? I'd refer you to the jail trust attorney for that. I okay. Have not. Okay. Thanks. I'm not under investigation by anybody that I know of until I was contacted by the media about this, and and that's all I know. When were you contacted by the media? Yesterday. Why'd you decide to do this here? Because I think that we need to bring transparency to this process, and we need to point out the bullying efforts that. District Dave Prater and his henchmen, like Mr. Giger, do. And I think that's wrong. It's an abuse of power. Um, we need to, again, bring the focus of this office back on public safety, not political defense. Did you expect to be confronting the current district attorney when you did this? Um, when I announced a press conference right before Correct. his office, yes. uh, I expected it might happen, yes. Any thoughts on the fact that the DA is standing right there? I have to explain why he opened an investigation of a political point right before the election. That's an abuse of power. Do you Sam? have any evidence to suggest that Giger DJ. was involved in this? Or are you making He's his He's certainly claim? the recipient and the beneficiary. Thank you very much. Mr. Prater. How are you? Can you give us a timeline on what happened? Can you first confirm whether you were the person who requested the investigation? Uh, now that Mr. Calvi's made these allegations against me in my office, I'm more than happy to. Otherwise, these are matters that we do not disclose because we want to make sure that everyone has a due process right to uh, be investigated without interference from outside entities and the press and otherwise, and assure that the uh, presumption of innocence is maintained. So I would have never confirmed that I would that I actually have. A, refer a criminal investigation to the OSBI on Kevin Cowley. But now that he's made these allegations against me, I will, and I'll lay out the timeline exactly how it came to life. And you will fully understand uh, that this is nothing about what Mr. Calvi wants to allege, and it's just normal process uh, for DAs throughout the state to handle matters in this way. Somewhere prior to June the 14th of this year, a county employee from another county office came to our civil division and said, I have some information that concerns me about the use of public money being used for campaigns. There were two elected county officials at that time that this person brought evidence on. Now, the first person was a, uh, a county elected officer who has since resigned, and the other was Kevin Calvi. They laid out the information that they had against uh, the other elected official and Kevin Calvi. Uh, at some point after that, we had the employees from the state auditor's office come to our office and make allegations about potential use of public money uh, being used for campaigns by Commissioner Calvi. At that point, we gathered the information that they provided us, looked at the information that had been previously uh, provided us by the county official, uh, the county employee, it was not an elected official, to be clear, and determined that at that point it would not be appropriate, appropriate at all for my office to be involved in the investigation. I called Ricky Adams, the director of the OSBI, and told him we had a matter that we couldn't investigate and asked, that, asked for a meeting with him to uh, refer the matter to them and allow them to handle it however they did. We met with the OSBI on June the 14th of 2022. I don't know how this came to light. This man to my left, Nolan Clay, called me two days ago and said that he had confirmed that the OSBI was investigating Kevin Calvi. He said, I'm not going to ask you to confirm it because I already have. Will you tell me anything about it? I said, Nolan, I can't. I'm not going to talk about it. A couple other people have called me since then. About an hour ago now, I began to get media calls indicating that Mr. Cowley was having a press conference in front of my office. I had no idea what it was about. And then I was told by another a member of the media that, that there were allegations about uh, bullying and uh, abuse of power and things like that. The same allegations that Mr. Cowley continues to make against me and will never cite a specific example. 
He talks about judges. Are we talking about the judges that have been removed by the Council on Judicial Compliance or the ones we call charges against? About elected officials, meaning the ones that we've convicted? So who am I bullying? And who, you know, tell me about the corruption in my office, Mr. Calvi. Give us a list. Give me a list, please. And you can also look at the things he's doing as a member of the jail trust, and, 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 and you can you you can make your own decision as to who's the corrupt person and who isn't. But that's what's going on. Uh, I don't know who disclosed this to Nolan Clay. He has his sources, as, the, as many of you do. Uh, I would not have disclosed it. I was not going to disclose it. It would have been inappropriate for me to disclose it any time, and certainly before an election. So you tell me what else you want to know. Are you a bully? No, I'm not a bully. I'm sure that people who are on the other side of issues with me may, may think I'm a bully, because we don't, we don't allow elected officials uh, to run amok in our county. We don't allow elected officials to mistreat people. And if it's a judge, if it's a legislator, if it's a county commissioner, we're going to call them out. And people don't like that. That's what being a DA is all about. It's not to make friends, it's to do the right thing. And if this guy's standing to my left, Kevin Calvi, doesn't like it, and he needs to stop being involved in, in behavior that, that continues to put him on everyone's radar. Can you tell us anything more about what was referred to the OSBI specifically? By the auditor's office in particular? Listen, I'm not going to do that. I, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. In, spite, in, spite of, in spite of the fact that I've been called a number of things by, by Mr. Calvi, I do not think that it's fair to put those allegations out there without them being fully investigated. So you can't confirm or deny whether it was just a $500 marketing kind of fee? I will tell you there were a number of allegations, not just the Veritas allegations. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you're referring to former county clerk David Hooten, who resigned. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, the Oklahoma County Sheriff's Office investigated uh, the allegations against him. Was that, again, were those received at the same time on June 14th? I, Different allegations. The allegations against uh, uh, former county clerk uh, David Hooten were related to campaign uh, misuse of, of public funds, okay. not, not the sexual harassment complaints. So you took though you asked the sheriff's office to look into Mr. Hooten or did who who? No, they both went to the OSBI. Both on Hooten and. Oh, Calvary that's right. The, the employees the asked the sheriff's office. They reported the sheriff's office. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm sorry. And knowing that you had um, a person on staff running against Mr. Calvi, did you have any reservation in, in taking this matter to the OSBI? No, as a matter of fact, that's exactly what I was bound to do by by. It's my duty to do that. I'm not going to look into it myself. I'm not going to have another county investigative agency, the sheriff's office, look into it because they've got a county commissioner possibly involved. So the independent agency that makes sense that it should be referred to is the OSBI or the FBI. But you know, it, I don't think it rose to a federal level, and I don't know, don't know if it violated any federal statutes. But the OSBI is the agency we go to all the time. You look at the number of investigations that have come to me recently that you know have come out of the governor's office. I mean, those are the that's the agency we refer things to. And when my office has a conflict, we can't investigate it. And I had a conflict because our civil division uh, represents Commissioner Calvi in his official capacity, and I didn't feel it was appropriate that we were involved in this. What would you say to members of the community who find the timing of this investigation convenient? Anyone can make those allegations. And so here's what I have to say. The uh, referral to the OSBI was June the 14th of 2022, okay? Not anywhere near today. All right, several months back. Matter of fact, I thought it was a dead matter until Mr. Clay called me two days ago. I had no idea that it was still open, all right? Um, and we get involved in a number of things that even though we know allegations may come regarding timing, oh, you know I got charged on my birthday, you did that on purpose. We hear that all the time. You know this was the anniversary of my child's death, you did that on purpose. There are inconvenient timing situations constantly when you're dealing with the number of cases and investigations we deal with in this, in this uh, matter, but in this office. But let me tell you what, as to Mr. Calvin, I will look him in the eye and tell him this, I have intentionally stayed out of anything political regarding this man. Intentionally done it. And anything that might have hurt him has been referred off to other agencies and entities to look at it in, in an independent manner. That's why we're not investigating it. That's why you didn't hear this from me. I wasn't about to have a press conference telling you that Kevin Calvin was under investigation by the OSBI. It would have been wrong. 
Uh, while we've got you, uh, you're looking into other high profile matters, uh, specifically the Seaworth Academy uh, situation. You had the audit. Um, what is the sta status of that investigation? Conveniently or inconveniently involves uh, a sitting judge on the Court of Civil Appeals and the Senate Minority Leader. Uh, where, where does that matter stand? What, what's the timeline and what does that look like? So we believe we are almost complete with that investigation. We're waiting on two documents to corroborate some testimony what we have from witnesses in that case. As soon as we get those, we'll be able to make a charging decision. I would anticipate that would occur. I would say by the end of this week, but since it's so late in the week, I'd say hopefully by the end of next week. Thank you. Any rebuttal, Commissioner? June 14th, we didn't, uh, referred this by his own admission, was two weeks before the primary election. Yes, the timing is very suspect. Thank you, Commissioner. What would you do if you were DA and a similar matter happened? Um, I would recognize that during political season, you get a lot of complaints that are not valid and I might wait until after an election if it was not something that was an ongoing serious thing that might be one uh, possibility I might refer it to um, uh, a different entity altogether what I wouldn't do is go leave it to the press who would be like a like the OSBI would be the uh, attorney general perhaps okay appreciate it thank you